Today we're going over the most important Chaos Legion card levels for bronze, silver, and gold, so stay tuned. Hello, hola, kamusta, this is Luke at Luke Plays to Earn, where I help the Krills of the world, the small investors, play to earn and become whales ourselves one day. And today we got a great video here, uh, working through Chaos Legion. What are the most important card levels for every single deck, every single card across bronze, silver, and gold? I've put it all in here in another trusty, handy Google Sheet. Before we explain everything, though, you know we got to shout out our amazing sponsor, Zen Sports. They are a awesome sports and esport betting app and they are an incredible esport creator for splinterlands and other play to earn games so check out their discord join there there's giveaways all the time for splinterlands and delegations it's a fun time i'm there so please join in all right so let's jump into this resource that i've made for you guys and this is again a resource if you want to build a deck for bronze for silver, for gold, estimated cost for these cards, which level I think is most important for these cards. It's a little subjective, but we'll go over that. And I give you guys silver deck examples for Chaos Legion cards for each type of deck. And remember your level limits for summoners and monsters here uh, are important here to keep in mind. Hey, all, Luke from the future here. I forgot to mention when I was making this video yesterday, if you can't afford these things, you can also simply just use this as a rental guide. So look through, if you only wanna rent a level two summoner, that's gonna give you break points for bronze. If you want to rent up to a level four silver summoner uh, for rare, then that's gonna get you to these break points. And of course, gold, a level six rare summoner. And then from there, you know, you can choose which cards you want for this deck and then use it as a rental strategy to push yourself into silver or maybe even gold. Back to Luke of the past. So when I did this sheet, essentially what I'm looking for is each monster, what are those important breakpoints as we call them in this game, leveling them up, you know, is getting a, you know, level two 10 ye striker really that much better than a level one? What is it gain? Is it just one extra health? Uh, you know, in most scenarios, an extra health doesn't really matter too much unless it gets you another uh, point of heal, you know, for triage or front frontline tank. If they go from healing two to three, sometimes it's enough, but usually it's more so I look for extra damage, of course, extra abilities, and sometimes extra speed is also good because you uh, introduce more dodging opportunity. You get to go first often over other players. So having even just a couple leveled up cards can be really important. So let me show you an example with one of my favorite cards for the death deck, the Silent Shavai. You know, at level three, you can have that for bronze since it's a common. You can get up to a level five in silver or up to a level eight in gold. Now to clarify, I don't play often too much in gold, so maybe I'm not the best person to say what's best for gold. But again, a lot of this is subjective. It's not a direct science. But the way I look at these cards and I see it, hey, look at this. Okay, Silent Shavai at level two, you're only gonna get one extra speed. Now that can be helpful again for going first or maybe dodging a shot. But at level three, that is a huge break point for me because then you're going from two sneak attack to having a monster with a three melee for the sneak attack. And then in silver, as we look at silver, is it really worth it to push for a level five? Well, where are you gonna get out of it? An extra speed and extra health? I mean, extra speed again is nice, but it's not a crazy break point to me. You could get away with a level three in silver play and you're gonna save yourself, what is this? Is it six bucks essentially between a level three here on peak monsters and a level five? And all you're getting for that extra six bucks is one extra speed and one extra health. So when you're creating a deck, that is something that you need to consider because especially if you're a Krill, maybe you have, you know, you're working hard on your blogs and you got 20 to 50 bucks to invest. Maybe you're someone who's just getting into the game and you have a couple hundred bucks that you wanna play in, but you're not sure, you don't wanna, you know, dump a thousand dollars into this game. Really those breakpoints are gonna be important because some cards, they're gonna power you up for two bucks and some cards, you know, they, they might be like, oh, this would be awesome to have, but that's $30 of my $100 budget. Is it really worth it to spend $30 for this one, you know, level two legendary card? And in my opinion, most often in Splinterlands through my play is because all of the rules are changing, the decks are changing, the mana caps are changing, there's no one perfect build, right? And so for me, my strategy has always been go for two or three leveled up decks that you feel like are your favorite that you find that you use the most often and spread out your bets rather than just going for, I want to have one really OP card, you know, unless it's something like Llama Cron, which even now is getting a little bit more countered uh, with some of the newer cards. Uh, unless it's like Llama Cron where you're like, I, if I can play this, I'm going to win like almost 90% of the games when I can get Llama Cron, uh, you know, 
but that's that's five hundred dollars itself uh, or more. So really, I think it's a better idea to just get yourself a couple leveled up decks. So we're going to go over a silver example deck. I'm going to show you how I think about it. And then you can scroll through here. You can see what card points that I think are important here for silver, gold, and bronze. But even in my silver example decks, not all of those I use at these silver levels because sometimes the price point you can see if you want some of these really important silver level cards all leveled up, uh, you know, most of these decks are 250 bucks, 240 bucks, 290 bucks for the earth deck, you know, 190 so you can get away a little bit less with the life deck. So instead on my example decks, I went through and said, hey, here's the cards that I find myself using the most often and that I would want leveled up if I'm starting from scratch. Or, you know, maybe you can't build yourself a silver level deck right now. I still think you should be thinking long term. I still think you should be like, okay, instead of just looking at bronze, what can I do one day in silver? Because even as a krill, even if you're just blogging right now and you're getting like 10 bucks a month out of blogging and other stuff, putting in the game, putting your rewards back into the game, you still, I think, want to shoot long term silver. We probably have, you know, three to four or five more months, maybe of good prices. Who knows for sure? But if you're reinvesting in the game one day, I think as krills, we need to be starting to think forward. What are we going to be in silver? Not just what is my favorite cards going at a bronze. So let's go through an example deck, the death deck. That's one that I really like for low mana. It also counters magic very well. And I'll show you how I'm thinking about which cards are important, which cards are good breakpoints. We'll give you an estimated cost that you guys can work out towards. And then you could also think about, you know, I'm just talking about Chaos Legion here, but you could also talk about, you know, getting some untamed cards. Uh, remember, modern format coming out maybe in a couple months won't allow alpha and beta cards. So unless you're focused on wild as a krill, I'd more focus on the modern format. So we can really think about Chaos Legion cards and untamed cards, maybe getting one or two. But mostly what you want to do is probably level up your Chaos Legion cards because it's going to be so much cheaper and then go rent some of those older cards that are more expensive if you don't have a lot of funds. Of course, untamed cards are you know more rare and they're probably gonna hold better value long term. But if we're just talking about wanting to progress and win in this game, Chaos Legion cards are so cheap right now, they're our best bet. So what I would be doing is looking at here, you can go to these cards that we're gonna be looking at. You can either do a bulk buy of Thaddeus, so a level four, which is what we want for a level silver max cap. Maybe you can't afford that right now. So maybe you're gonna start with a level two, then level three, and then eventually as you get rewards, put yourself into a level four Thaddeus because that's gonna be giving you max card for the silver level play. So you can see right now, estimated cost was 79 bucks if we click on a level four Thaddeus, but you could also use the Peak Monsters bid system to try to get lower prices here as they come in. As new cards come on the market, you might get little, you know, 10 cent, 20 cent, 30 cent discounts on these cards using the bid system. So let's walk through each of these cards. I'll tell you why I got that level or why I skipped it so you can get an idea of how I'm thinking about building a death deck and then you can apply hopefully that same logic to any deck whether you want fire, water, dragon, doesn't matter. Hopefully you get the idea of how I think about this game and hopefully it helps you guys. So we're going to get quite a few leveled up commons. Remember silver, you can get level five commons. And the reason why, even though you know they're not very powerful cards, again, in a lot of scenarios, they can help you out. You know, sometimes uh, a common card can be the difference maker in a little league or in poison battle or different things. So for carrying shade, I got a level five because it's only two bucks on the market. So that's pretty cheap to add to our deck. And at level five, it gets three speed and gets flying. So this card, I'd be using something to try to, you know, soak up a sneak attack or two because it can dodge out with the flying plus three speed now or maybe an opportunity attack if they you know are using the water deck or the fire deck and maybe it targets the shade and you know you can dodge a couple shots here and there and really keep your team alive crypt beetle at level five is nice because you get the two armor and three health plus the two attacks so the, again this is just a good little league card or maybe you put it in the back uh, for to absorb some sneak attack or an equalizer battle you know if you're playing equalizer and they play a card with you know eight health and crypt beetle has eight health you just got a massive tank for three mana shadow snitch i decided to go for a level four for a dollar uh, 46 at the time and the reason why is because at level four it gets an extra attack really a you know a card like this with one attack and reach it's just not very useful most of the time because the enemy might play something like a card up front with shield and then if you only have one damage you're not doing anything so giving it two extra or getting it to two attack is at least a little bit more meaningful and can finally be used i feel like a one one attack it really just does nothing for us and then again a level five gets us another speed 
But again, this is um, one of those breakpoints. Do I want to spend, you know, double going from level four to level five just for the extra speed? To me, probably not worth it. Now, something like the Silent Shavai, it might surprise you. I would actually go for a level five. You could get away with a level three, but level five, I know I talked about this earlier, maybe it wouldn't be worth it. But to me, this is one of our most important cards for death. So the fact that, yes, it's going to be pretty expensive going from three to a, you know, a level five for an extra six bucks. Uh, you know, when I did this <laughs> Google sheet, it was about $1.50 cheaper. So people are apparently wanting this card right now. But, uh, you know, you could make an argument that this is one of the cards that you're going to come back to over and over again because it's three sneak attack. It's just so powerful for five mana that having an extra speed and an extra health is going to keep this thing alive for a long time. And it's going to get attacks off really before most other characters in the game at silver level. So to me, it's worth it. You could get away with uh, a level three for sure and save a couple bucks though. And then Riftwing, we're going to go for a level five. And the reason we want a Riftwing level five is because that's when it gets backfire. So if it, you know, tries to attack and it misses, the fact that this card has flying and four speed at level five, you're probably going to get some misses and that attacker is going to take damage back. So that is a huge break point. This Riftwing uh, at level one, it's okay with scavenging and flying. You're going to miss some shots. But at level five, that's where this thing actually makes a huge difference in your play. So this is a breakpoint card that I think is really important to work your way towards. And then we can go look at rares, which again at silver is gonna be capped out at four. Soul Strangler, I did decide to go for a level four to get the extra speed, but you could again, just look for that breakpoint of level three and get the three attack. That's you know gonna cost you 230, where if you want the extra speed, which is kind of nice because two speed is kind of a slow character and to have an extra speed in these silver play, uh, I think is pretty important, but if you can't afford it, that's where I would say, okay, stick myself back at level three. At least I get the extra damage. The Dampier Stalker definitely has a break point at level four because that's when it gets four range damage. So I would not level it up unless you're going to get to level four because at that point, maybe you're, you can argue level two for the extra speed. But again, I would say level four is that pretty massive break point to get to four range damage. Now, oddly enough, this is a point in my silver deck example where I just actually skipped over a card because the life sapper you get level one automatically as a starter card. You can go for a level four and get the extra magic damage. That is a break point, but then you also start with less health, making yourself more vulnerable and you're going to spend six bucks. So for something like this, I decided actually I'm just not going to do it because I find myself using actually the Venari Bonesmith reward card, which if you're playing the game enough, you're going to earn 25 cards anyways. And this card has not only life leech, but for an extra mana gets poison. And that poison is way more deadly to me than just the one extra damage. So for me, Personally, I haven't said, hey, let's skip over the Life Sapper, save ourselves six bucks. And then we can come over here to the Cursed Wind Deku, which everyone spams in bronze and silver. Unfortunately, we can't get at silver the heal, which is super powerful in gold, but uh, at least we can get it to, to level three, get an extra damage. I didn't decide on level four for the one HP bonus. So level three versus level four is gonna save us a total of eight bucks here. And that's a pretty uh, big difference, just having the extra damage here. Uh, especially for six mana. All right, now let's look at some epics, which at uh, silver level, we can get level three in here. Something like the Insidious Wardlock. This is again, a break point to me, getting it to level two gives you the two damage. This is not a card that I use quite often, so we could technically skip it, but you know, it's a pretty cheap card. So you can argue for, you know, uh, just four bucks that adding an extra magic damage, plus it has recharge. So really you're actually adding three damage to this card because it, you know, it was gonna go from times three to three instead of two times three to six. So, so that's a pretty big break point, even though I don't use that card that often. So you could technically skip it, but it's nice to have a little bit of magic damage with that six magic damage recharge could be useful. Wielding Warrior is definitely a character that you can argue either way. You can keep it at level one just for the shatter if you want to take away the enemy's armor. But for two mana, getting the, the second range is pretty nice. The prices again went up a little bit, so you might want to wait to see if prices drop back because when I was doing this Google sheet, it was only 13 bucks. Uh, so maybe 17 bucks is a little expensive for you. Maybe it wouldn't be priority. But if you can get to level three, two mana for two range is also pretty nice. Then the Magi actually just stayed with a level one because in most scenarios, two magic damage snipe and silver does quite a bit. You could try to get it to the next break point, which would to get it to the third level for that three magic damage. Level two is really not that useful. Adding an extra health when you already have camouflage to me doesn't really matter. But the fact that level three is now costing us 25 bucks 
to get one extra magic damage on our snipe. Uh, I feel like there are you know better options within this deck where to me that's something that's like a break point. It's like, yeah, that would be really cool to have, but is it worth the extra, you know, 22 bucks to get it? To me, probably not a big enough deal. Then we can look at our legendaries, which we can go for level twos. Fiends, really at level two or three, don't get a ton, so I don't go for leveled up fiends. Lyra, I do find myself actually using quite a bit because it has lots of speed. The snare is nice, especially for earthquake battles or when you think they're gonna play a bunch of flying characters. And I think to get the extra damage is quite worth it. It is 22 bucks right now, so that is a little bit steep, but sometimes it's a ni it's nice to splurge a little bit more for certain cards that you use more often. So maybe you, you're finding yourself actually don't use Lyra that much. Maybe you go, go for a level one or just skip it all together. Uh, but to me, a level two for the extra range damage and having that with an opportunity attack and so much speed is a pretty good card, in my opinion, that I find myself using quite often. And then the Jin Muria is another card that I decided on level one. Yes, the Giant Killer can be nice and they are creating more cards with 10 or ma more mana. But at silver level, I, I feel like while it happens from time to time, there aren't you know, so many matches where I'm always facing 10 mana cards. Maybe if they continue to make more, maybe it becomes more of a problem. But for me, a level one, I feel like is something that I find that is useful. And then just getting the giant killer ability plus an extra health for, you know, another 14, 15 bucks on top of that, that to me is a break point that isn't worth it. So I left that one out. So there you go. You can see a silver level deck as I built that was 171 bucks. Uh, you know, you can also, again, as I said, rent some of those older alpha or untamed cards, maybe to round out your deck if you don't have extra money to go buy some of those older cards. Then, of course, I would always come to neutrals and pick up some leveled up neutrals that I want to round out my deck with. So something like the Supply Runner would be really nice. At level five, it gives swiftness to your whole team. I feel like it's a pretty powerful card. You could even go for a level two Chaos Agent. Just make sure you have the dodge on it at least. At least a level uh, two Zenith Monk so that you can have a, a monk for Little League that heals and other si situations can be helpful to have that heal. Spirit Hoarder at level one could be nice to triage your backline for the death deck. And then again, make sure you're thinking about your reward cards as you get leveled up summoners. As you get these reward cards, you can start combining them and leveling up. Gargoyle Devil at uh, level four gets a three range damage and death blow. So that is a card that as you level up actually gets more powerful, especially when it gets to at least level three for the three range. When you already have a lot of range damage on your death deck, that can be another good card to add. Pelicar Deceiver, honestly, I don't use quite often. Maybe for an earthquake battle here or there, it can be okay. But getting two damage for your Pelicor Deceiver is nice. Gargoyle Lion, LOL. <laughs> uh, at level five, you can start using Void and adding that to your death deck, which is nice. And then, you know, Uraeus is super powerful, Silent Shavai uh, with the three sneak attack, if you can get it there, and then a Uraeus level two at least to get the two sneak attack. Then all of a sudden you have five sneak attack on your team. That's pretty powerful. Harkla at level two is something I use for poison all the time because it gets immunity. And if you get that level four silver summoner, you can start using level two, sum uh, level two legendaries. So in this case, you'd be able to get the immunity on Harkla and really use that for poison battles. So hopefully you understand how I'm thinking about building a deck and then you can go and look at this sheet and whatever deck, I'm not saying death is the best deck of all time. I think you can really get away with any of these decks as long as you know how they're supposed to be played and in what scenarios they're supposed to be played. And again, depending on what your funds, you know, maybe you just start with one or two of these decks at a time and work your way towards that. Or maybe you don't go full silver. Maybe you, you know, level down some of these cards. You don't go full blown. And instead you look for a hundred dollar, you know, example of this or a $50 example of this and find those break points in bronze until you can work your way up to silver. So, uh, hopefully you can choose from here some of your favorite cards and see get an estimated price of course price changes all the time the market could go up or down from when i did this it already went up a little bit from when i did this a couple days ago and it could go down from here so at least you can get an example of okay all these cards if i really want them you know in gold silver or bronze this is what they're going to cost me at these important breakpoints for these cards but if i want to build a silver deck and maybe skip some of these cards or maybe not level them up to these amounts of levels. Here are some examples of what you could do. And I tried to keep them all under 200 bucks. Don't forget, you can also, as I've said before, get a level two quicks and use that with any leveled up monsters across all your decks, as long as dragon is available to play.
So hopefully this was helpful. I hope you can use this resource. The Google sheet, if I remember, should be in the description. And if I remember also to put it in the comments, that will be helpful. Uh, let me know what you guys' favorite decks are. If you agree with these breakpoints, again, it's not a science. Maybe there's a card that you disagree with and you're like, actually, if you level it up to you know level three instead of level two, I think this is really important for that one speed and tell me why. I'm inter interested to hear your guys' thoughts as well as you know, if you're interested, I can also uh, go back and add to this. I'm thinking about maybe doing this with Untamed and looking through, even though those, those cards are more expensive, maybe some uh, cards that we can add to these decks. Maybe we can do them one at a time for a fire build, a water build, and add some of the older cards as well, or maybe some rentals to show you guys how I would think about these decks. So if that's something that interests you, let me know, and I'll keep adding to this resource. For now, that's it. Peace out, Paolo. Adios. I'll see you guys later, my friends. Krill crew.